My name is Anwar Major Durak. I was born in Tel Kippen um, in 1965. I was 10. We moved here in 1975. My grandmother was here and I, my mom had some of her siblings that were here. And my mom and my sister came first for a couple of years and then, and then my dad and the rest of us came. When we first, so we left um, Tel Kippen and we stayed with my aunt in Baghdad for a little bit. And then from there, we, while we were waiting for paperwork to get processed uh, uh, in Lebanon for about a month, and then we, f of course, flew, flew here. And so when we moved here, we moved to the Seven Mile uh, Detroit area. It was a mixture, right? There were certainly, I had friends that were Chaldean my age, and I had friends that were American. And in that way, and we, we were put in schools. We came in the middle of the school year, so we got placed in schools. I didn't speak English. It was a little frightening to be placed in a school where trying to understand what was being said. But, um, you know, when we're children that young, you pick up the language very quickly. And so, um, and I had friends that didn't speak Chaldean. So it, we, when we were children, we just picked it up really fast when, we were, when I was that young. So um, it, that was helpful. It was helpful to have a lot of Chaldeans. There were shops. So we lived in, in that area uh, for quite a few years until, until I started college and then we moved uh, to the West Bloomfield area. We were kids, it was an adventure, it was exciting to the idea of coming to America because we, we had heard about other individuals who had come to America and it wasn't until much later in my life that I realized what my father gave up to be here because he gave up his identity as a carpenter. He had a business as a carpenter and he moved here. His role got switched. His children ended up being the ones that understood English and, and had to translate for him and he couldn't do what he did in Iraq when he was a carpenter because the kind of carpentry work he did wasn't, he couldn't do that here. I think about how much he gave to, to us to give that up for himself, for us to be able to be in the United States and to have the opportunities and he made the decision along with my mom that we would come because he knew what was coming. He knew that the war was going to come to Iraq. He knew that we were not going to have opportunities. So he gave that up so that he, his children could come here and have the opportunity to go to school and to you know, achieve what they wanted to achieve and to have opportunities. So for that, I will forever be grateful to him. It probably hit more when we were in school and I, when I would feel um, out of place because I looked, I didn't sound the same as other kids. I didn't, we were, you know, I mean, when we came here, there were nine of us. My mom and dad had another child here, so there's 10 kids. So we were a very large family and we were poor. I mean, we didn't have a lot of money. So buying the most uh, fashionable clothes was not on the, on, the, on the list of things that, were, that was important because we had to make sure that, that our basic needs were being met. So hand-me-downs from folks was the norm. So I think, you know, when, and when you're young and, and growing up in those teenage years and having to be in a community where other kids would um, sort of notice the difference that you, that you have because of the language, because you didn't speak well. And even when I became fluent in English and my parents wanted us to go to a Catholic high school, so I had been going to a, a public school in Detroit and then we moved we were still living in, in Detroit in Seven Mile and then we ended up going to a Catholic high school and that's where I, I would say probably it became so real for me. High school can be difficult for kids. I re recall just feeling very different. One because we were Chaldean and, and because of you know what happens I remember the lunchroom we had all the white kids sat in the middle the black kids sat on the one side and the Chaldean kids sat on the other side and it was those differences were very stark and um, I felt it more there than I ever did. And I will say, when I came to Wayne State, and there's where I felt that freedom, where I saw the differences. There was a, there was a huge diverse, um, uh, diversity among students in terms of their backgrounds, their socioeconomic status, their ethnicity, their language. And, and I just, I, I found my home here. So I'm not surprised that I'm still here because I found that. As an undergraduate student, I just, it was such a, breath of fresh air from high school because high school was hard you know we I didn't feel like I fit in there were um, you know we it was a different there were kids that came from a, a class that was that was much different than where we were 
you know, kids that grew up in more affluent families, and um, and they weren't they weren't always kind. Let me just say. Um, but I think coming to Wayne, because there were you could find kids from all walks of life, and everybody was accepted for who they were. And I was able to embrace my identity as a Chaldean person and as a Chaldean woman more here than I was anywhere. I felt, you know, I saw it as a as a plus, I saw it as a something that really added to who I was as a person, and I saw the strength in that that helped me to succeed right in college. Whereas in high school, I I, I saw it as a diff, as a, a difference that made me stand out in a way that wasn't seen as positive, because some of the kids uh, would make fun or would not be supportive or would say things, but not here. Here, I saw it as a strength, and it it helped me to be. Um, strong and I remembered it wasn't when I said earlier I recognized what my father gave up it was here where I really felt that and I thought you know I cannot imagine what it would be like now as an adult to move to a country where I don't know the language where I couldn't practice what I know and I would have a family that I was responsible for and he did that and I thought what better way for me to honor that and to honor him than to succeed and do well in what I wanted to do in my life and to always remember that I was given that opportunity and so I always kept that with me. And, and, and since then, whatever endeavor I take, I put my all into it. And I know that that's, a, um, that's something that I think all Chaldeans have in common, that we, we recognize that it's a gift that we have and we're thankful and we don't take it for granted. And we work really hard to make sure that we do well in everything we undertake. And so I do that now. Growing up in Iraq, even even up until the age of 10, my memory of both my mom and my dad is that they really encouraged us always to, 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 be, to be kind, to be ethical, to, be, um, to, work, to, to honor the people that we're working with. You know, my dad, and I have really strong recollections of my father working with communities in Iraq, you know, as a carpenter, and not just with Chaldeans. He worked with um, with Muslims in Iraq where he would you know engage in work that they needed and, and he always taught us to respect others no matter who they were and what their belief systems were and you know in part I think it was because of who he was and how he grew up but also because he wanted to make sure we were protected right when we came here there was a, a, a gentleman that came up when my father passed away and he came up to us and said you guys don't know this but um, your dad saved my life uh, he had done something and the, the, the uh, authorities were looking for him and he came to my dad's house and my dad let him stay and he basically allowed him to hide until they sort of stopped looking for him and he, and he to this day he credits my dad for his life and I never knew that but it, it gave me a, a really interesting perspective of the strength and the belief system that my father have, had had about human life and, and about relationships and, and and helping your brother and your neighbor. And I think that has always been, that has been instilled in us um, from uh, both of my parents. And so I, I grew up with that. Um, and that has, I think, always helped me to, to, um, to do well, but to, to see the best in people. And I think when you do that, you, you, when you do that, you, you bring good things, right? Because what you put out comes back. I've always believed that. So if you, if you um, engender kindness and if you engender, um, uh, you know, acceptance, then I think you bring that to yourself. I, I just have always felt that way. So I feel like I've I've been fortunate that wonderful people have have come into my life and have have offered me opportunities, but but I that has come because of foundation I was given as a child and as a young woman was a strong one and and you know my father and mom were open to be going to school they encouraged us to do well and they did encourage us to go to college now when I got my bachelor's my father was well you have your bachelor's now it's time to think about getting married and settling down and when I decided to do a master's he did question like well why are you doing that you know and I um, but he was open to hear and I said this is what I want to do I'm interested in doing that um, I, I did go through a difficult time in that I had decided, when I decided to do that, I decided to move out, which, you know, was not embraced at all. And so there was a period that was very difficult because I had older siblings and younger siblings. And of course, my parents were worried 
and instead of being worried, they were angry. And so I, I, I struggled during that time. It was a very, very difficult time for me. But eventually, as they saw me doing well, and then it, and when Patrick and I, my husband now at that time, we met here at Wayne State, you know, and he wasn't Chaldean, so that was also a no-no. Um, but again, after they got to meet him, um, I think my dad, and I said to him, I, you, there's a part of my dad's kindness that I see in you that I was attracted to. And so as he got to know my father, um, and they started slowly accepting him, and then of course when we got married and then when the children came, they definitely had to accept him, and things got a lot, got easier in that way those experiences and and how my parents really held us in their love and their the positive energy that they gave out and encouragement that they gave all of their children were the things that helped me to be comfortable to succeed and to to be open to trying things and that doesn't mean i wasn't scared or frightened because i think you know i i'd experienced a little bit of um, um feedback from individuals that weren't always kind, that wanted, you know, that we were different and so we were looked at, upon as different. But there were more people that were accepting and kind and those were the people I always remembered and they were the ones that encouraged me to continue to, to do well and to try new things and to succeed. When I, I, I um, graduated from Wayne and I worked in a psychiatric facility for about three years and it was a, a mentor who called me and said, there's a position open, I think you'd be really good, so apply. Um, and I did. And I, I applied because I thought, I'll just get experience interviewing, but I was shocked they hired me. And I've been at Wayne since 94, in uh, different positions. Um, so it's been a long time. Right after high school, I, you know, it was agreed that I would go to college. And we were fortunate because Wayne State is a Research One institution. It's, it's really in our backyard, so it was easy to, to and, and of course, we couldn't afford for me to go away to college. So it was a no-brainer to think that I would apply to Wayne. I did, and I took many buses from Seven Mile to here, to Wayne State, and um, started in, I, I want to say, 80, Four eighty-five, uh, and did a bachelor's degree, and you know, uh, like many Chaldeans, we were encouraged to think about being a lawyer or a doctor or a pharmacist, and um, so yeah, we started out as pre-med. But as my as my journey uh, continued at Wayne, and as I found faculty who were um, uh, who were wonderful at encouraging me, I, I steered myself more towards psych. Um, and after I got my bachelor's degree, um, I, I was encouraged to do an internship and met someone who is a professor in the School of Social Work. So I did an internship working with families who were struggling. Um, and we did some home, homework with families that had kids that were at risk of being removed and working with the Department of Health and Human Services with protective services. And so that was my first um, um, exposure to working with families that, that were uh, experiencing difficulties. And the person who encouraged me to get a master's degree was part of that program. It used to be called PACT, which was an um, acronym for Parents and Children Together. So I did that for a year, and that's where I met actually my husband, who was a student in that program. And um, I got my master's degree, and when I graduated, I, I um, started working as a psychiatric social worker in a hospital nearby, did that for about three years, and then I was encouraged to apply for a position at Wayne State. I did so thinking I, you know, some changes were being made at the hospital where I worked at, and I was um, pleasantly surprised when I was hired. And I started out as an academic advisor, and I, I worked for several years doing that with uh, social work students, master students and then did a little bit of lecture as a lecture teaching a little bit i found that not so much to my liking and um, after being an advisor for about nine years the the director of field education the person who arranges all the internships retired and i was asked to apply for that position and and was hired as director of field ed and did that for about eight nine years and then in 2019 the dean uh, cheryl kubiak here at wayne asked me if I would um, take on the role of Assistant Dean for Student Affairs, and so I've been doing that for the last three years. And in this position, I 
work with um, social work students, the office that arranges their internships as part of their degree, but also oversee the office that, that coordinates the um, um, applications to both our BSW and MSW programs. So I, I, I love it. There's no day that's the same. Um, I work with students, um, with faculty, with staff. And in this role, I, I get a chance to work with some Chaldean students. You'd be surprised the number of Chaldean students that have applied and have gone through uh, our BSW and MSW programs. So, and, and I've been able to in, uh, connect with some of our Chaldean organizations who have taken some of our student interns as part of their degree program. And so I've had a chance to, to engage in that way as well. And I have seen, I've definitely obviously seen a growth in our community, right? So I think as I, I laughingly said that we were encouraged to be, you know, do pre-med or pre-law or pre-pharmacy. Uh, and now I, I think students come really look, thinking about what they, what they are drawn to and thinking about who they are as individuals and finding the area that they feel drawn to and thinking about how they can pursue that and find and make uh, their way in life doing what they like to do versus what others might want them to do. And I think become uh, wonderful contributors. Um, I, I find that um, Chaldean students are very motivated. They want to do well, you know, like many other students, right? And, and they want to be able to find their way in life and, and, and want to give back to their communities. And I, I love that. I think it's wonderful. And if I can s encourage, it's funny because oftentimes they'll come and people will say to me, you don't look Chaldean. And um, I've had many students that walked in my office and, I'll, and they would sit down and I'll say, Imori uh, Makibadodet, and they are floored when I when I start talking in Chaldean, and they're like, "I didn't think you speak Chaldean." I said, "Well, you went to Kipnetha, of course, back in So they um, uh, they're taken aback, and I think that opens opens things up, and they start talking to me about what they want to do, and um, and that's great. I love those relationships. I don't think there is a year where I'm bored. You know, the, each year graduation is wonderful because I see their enthusiasm and I see the pride that they have in, in their achievements and if I can if I'm a small part of that that I'm helping them to find their way then to me that makes my my job worthwhile and I love doing it it's absolutely wonderful I would tell them to be involved I you you don't know what you like without trying things ask questions be engaged find groups to be a part of it is those experiences that I think will help each of us find things that we might feel passionate about. And you know, when you're out, once you're done work with school, when you start to look for jobs, yes, your degree is important, and yes, that opens the door. But equally, it's the extracurricular, you know, activities that you might engage with, the people that you connect with um, that will give you that little bit of nugget or maybe the connection that you might need to find that perfect opportunity. Um, there are a lot of folks out there, and students don't, they're sometimes reticent about going to their faculty and asking questions, and faculty want students to ask. Don't ever think that they don't and feel like you can't go. Call your faculty member, email them, and ask them questions. Be involved and tell them that you, if, if you're unsure about something, ask them. If you, the longer you wait, if you have difficulty, the longer you wait, the less options exist. The sooner you go to faculty, the more options exist and the more opportunities will come your way. So do that. I would encourage every student to think about doing that. <music>